His nickname is the Chessboard Killer, and he racks up more bodies than Jeffrey Dahmer, son of Sam, and Jack the Ripper combined. Jesus. Russia Whoa. has never seen okay. anything like Alexander Pachushkin, the Chessboard Killer. 60 people. It starts as whispers among neighbors. Sheesh. A monster must be living in the woods. He actually likes to befriend them before he kills them. Oh my God. He will invite them for a walk through bits of park. He will give them vodka. When they become under the influence, he will hit them over the head and throw their bodies down a well. Oh. During the search of Alex's mother's house, they find a chessboard. The spaces on the chessboard are numbered. Pachushkin tells police each number represents a victim. That is creepy. He's like, when I hit 64, will be good. That's some fucked up shit. What makes them not stop? Like, what, 60? Only two spaces are blank. What? There are 64 squares on a chessboard, which means he killed 62. Wow. At least. The police charged him with only 48, Holy. and that actually upset him. Pachushkin earns the nickname, the chessboard killer. Alexander Pachushkin gets what he wants the title of most notorious serial killer in Russian history. Only life in prison? <laughs> wow, which means he's still alive. I would like to know if there was rhyme or reason to it. Like, she looks kind of like a queen. Oh, that one's a bishop. He thinks of this as a game. He thinks of himself as intelligent, superior to other beings. I know because I used to be part of the chess club and so many of us thought we were superior to other people, even though they weren't complete nerds. But this guy needs to be compensating for something because that is ridiculous. It was a case that almost defied belief. Someone was killing elderly women in Mexico, strangling them with oh, a stethoscope. Oh, that's crazy. This is the very first time in Mexican history that police named and profile a serial killer. The first time? Nickname, El Mataviejitas. What does that mean? This means the little old lady killer. Wow. They have a word for that. Grandmothers are thought as grandmothers of the nation. It is because they were elderly women that police deploy a whole task force. That makes sense. To find this specific serial killer. The person the police caught defied their profile of a serial a killer. Yeah, herself. Her name was Juana Barraza. What in the world? Juana Barraza is a professional Luchador. Lucha Libre wrestler what? that has been profiled as the very first female serial killer of elderly women in Mexico City. It makes me wonder like what her relationship was with her mom and her grandmother. They make a point to say that the police created a task force for this case because of how important old ladies are to their culture. Grandmas are like the centerpieces of families. They are the glue, like it's Brazilian, so like still like a Latina culture. They're seen as like figureheads in most families. Mm -hmm. So to knock a granny down is. On November 3rd, 2003, 35-year-old Yang Xinhai was arrested by police in the province of Hebei in Kanzhou, China for the murders of at least 67 people in a two-year time period. The motive for the killings, according to Yang, was that he had been dumped by his girlfriend and wanted to take his anger out on society. What? You... What? Oh my gosh, it's such a pity party. It's always a pity party, man. Everyone's just, ah, oh, I feel bad for me. I gotta do this because my life sucks so much. It's like, bro, come on. You get rejected by a girlfriend and you decide 67 people seems like a fair exchange for my pain. Across the provinces of Anhu, Habai, Hanan, and Shandong, Yang would enter family homes and commit what is known as familicide the act of killing an entire family. Wow, the whole family. In many cases, the women were raped and the pets were also <sighs> killed. The murders and rapes would continue for the next three years, totaling over 67 murders of men, women, and children, 23 rapes, and 10 serious injuries. Because of a relationship, a failed relationship, that's insane. He was insane. I think maybe it's an excuse. That's an excuse. You're like, my girlfriend dumped me. No, you are mentally unstable. Mm -hmm. You just wanted an excuse to kill people. So you're like, this vaguely upset me. Let me go murder 67 people. La 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 la. Ooh, I'm okay. I'm not, but I'm like, I'm great. I'm not. Carl Denke, 
a native of one of the small Silesia villages. He sold leather suspenders, belts, shoes, and shoelaces. Oh, no. Denke began selling, quote, no. meat goods, end quote, mm. that he packaged mm. in neat little pickle jars. I already know where this is With going. With the food shortages that ran rampant oh. during post-World War I Germany and the surrounding European countries, his products saw a high volume in sales. Oh. People were starving and saw the local meat dealer to be somewhat of a salvation. December 21st, at approximately 1 p.m. that oh, no, afternoon, no way. a young man covered in blood ran to his local police station and claimed that Denke tried to kill him with a pickaxe. Oh my God. A few hours later, after the conclusion of the interrogation, people found Denke dead in his cell, having hanged himself with a handkerchief. Police thought the suicide odd and traveled to Denke's residence to do some investigating on their own. After all, what did they think they would find from a man so well-respected in his own community? The first findings made at Denke's house during the search were bones and pieces of Yeah, meat. what would they find? The latter were in a salt solution found in a wooden drum. There were altogether 15 pieces with skin. Police also found human flesh that appeared half-eaten and assumed, without any real evidence, that Denke must have consumed the pieces of flesh before his arrest. Police also assumed that human meat that they discovered in the Denke residence must have been sold in the, quote, pickled jars, end quote, that Denke peddled throughout the town. Even though Denke may not have eaten some of his victims or even sold their meat, he did use human parts to make the various products that he sold, including, but not limited to, belts of human skin, suspenders from dried and leathered tendons, and even an attempt to make a hat of human skin. That actually reminds me of something that my grandmother would say, don't eat everyone's cooking. <laughs> Interesting though, he's the only one so far that's tried to profit off the murder. He treated this like a business. He made pickled meat, so it was indistinguishable. If you pickle the meat, then you don't question where that meat comes from, right? And then you take the parts of the human because he's so efficient to make clothing. So he literally treated humans like we treat cows. The city was starving and they didn't have food. And so it makes you think like, did he think he was doing society a favor by providing food? The real life Dexter killer who murders criminals. Meet the man from Brazil whose exploits in life probably have inspired the TV show character. Wow. Pedro Rodriguez Filho was born in a farming village of Santa Rita de Sapucai in Minas Gerais, That's Brazil. My state. I'm from Minas Gerais. That's where I'm from. Bombtown Pride. While he was still 13 years old, he had a heated argument with an older cousin. Things must have escalated from verbal to physical. <laughs> during which he tried to kill Dude. the boy. Oh, Philho man. drew his first blood a year later when he killed the vice mayor of their town, who fired his father after being suspected of stealing. According to reports, the now so-called Pedrino Matador, or Killer Petty, would kill drug traffickers after robbing them of their goods, okay. having heard about how his father butchered his mother. Whoa. Philho set his eyes upon his old man. He At the what? time, the older Philho was detained and awaiting trial in a city jail. He went into his father's holding cell, and there he killed him. It happened that while being transported to prison, he was riding along with a known rapist. By the time the police went to open the back of their transporter, the other prisoner was already lifeless. This guy is Philho able. immediately claimed responsibility for the crime. Inside the prison, Philho sort of became a punisher who reportedly killed almost 50 of his fellow inmates. Philho was what? originally sentenced to 128 oh years in prison. God. And with the subsequent murders he committed behind the bars, it got extended to 400 years. <laughs> the funny thing is... <laughs> Damn, wow, what? <laughs> what? It went from 100 years to 400 years. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Under the Brazilian law, the maximum prison sentence a convict is allowed to serve should not exceed 30 years. What? Having been imprisoned since 1973, Philho got his freedom in 2007. What? Pedro Rodriguez what? Philho is now 65 what? years old, and according to recent information, is now a totally changed man. Uh, no, he's not. He has since been working on an autobiography and a YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel. 
What? Where he purportedly advises young people to avoid the life of crime. He almost killed his cousin. He killed for his dad and then he killed his dad. And then he just started killing other people that he deemed criminals. But what? what is he? You have someone who is pretty much a self-proclaimed vigilante going after horrible people and people are gonna view that differently to the point where he got released. The Brazilian justice system, similar to the American justice system, isn't exactly just all the time. So he could just be murdering people who didn't actually do anything. It's interesting because they do compare him to Dexter and it's like uh, in the way that he would kill like criminals. But we can all convince ourselves that what our wrongdoing is, is right if we try hard enough. This reminds me of the musical Chicago. What do you do after your serial killer? I'm going to make media and become rich. People are like watching this guy like actively. Jesus. Maybe we need to cut this segment out because he's not coming after me. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> hey Pedro, hi bestie. Oi, which is, hi.